For this example, we're going to be looking at the function f of x equals the factor x plus 3 times the factor x minus 4 times the factor natural log of x. And now the um, factor that makes this problem a little bit different is that natural log of x factor. So the graph of the natural log of x looks like this. We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. It crosses the x-axis at x equals 1, and it increases uh, forever. And so the thing that we need to remember here is the domain of natural log of x is uh, 0 to infinity. We cannot include 0, and we definitely don't include anything negative. That can't be plugged into the, to the factor natural log of x, so therefore it can't be plugged into the function f of x. And so as we are going to be uh, doing these problems, we are really only looking at not a complete number, line for f, but rather a number line that starts at 0 and goes to the right, not including 0. And so um, the 0 and negative values are the only places where f um, is undefined. And so now we're left with where is f equal to 0. Well, we find out where f is equal to 0 by setting each factor equal to 0 and solving. So we've got x plus 3 is equal to 0, giving us x equals negative 3. We've got the x uh, minus 4 equal to 0, giving us x equals 4. And we've got natural log of x equals 0, giving us x is equal to 1. Uh, you can see that graphically um, whenever you input 1 for x, you've got natural log of 1 is equal to 0. That's where it crosses the x-axis. Or if you're algebraically solving this equation, you can e both sides, e it to get rid of the natural log. And so you would really be looking at x equals e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is equal to 1, 2. And so uh, these are the three values that we would typically put on our number line, but we see right away that our number line, because we've um, already taken out the places where it's undefined, it's undefined on a, an interval, not just a particular value, um, we see that we're going to have this x equals negative 3 as an irrelevant one that we're going to just throw away. That's not on the interval that's in the domain. And so the only two values we have then to put on this uh, number line would be the 1 and the 4. And so we're going to have test values in between there on the 1 and the 4. So we've got um, the test value of 1 half, let's say test value of 2, and test value of 5. Notice my test values are my particular chosen values. Other people could choose different values, and that's why I put them in parentheses. They're just ones to kind of keep in my head. All right, so let's look individually. Um, the factor 1 half, when we plug it in, or sorry, the test value 1 half, when we plug it into each factor, we've got 1 half plus 3 would be positive. We've got um, 1 half minus 4 would be negative. And then we've got to figure out what the natural log of a half is. Well, a half is to the left of... Um, of 1 here on our graph, and so if we're talking 1 half there, then we're looking at going uh, down on our graph, and so the output value would be negative for the natural log there. If you're taking the natural log of something less than 1, it's going to be negative. So now we've got a positive times negative times negative. Overall, that would be a positive sign. We move on to the next test value of 2. 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's a positive factor. 2 minus 4 is negative, so that's a negative factor. And now we're uh, looking at the factor for natural log of 2. Well, uh, natural log of 2 there is, or 2 is to the right of 1. And then if we have um, the natural log of 2, we have to go up to get to the graph. So that output value is going to be positive. The natural log of anything bigger than 1 is going to be positive. And so we've got positive times negative times positive, which is negative overall. And we move to our last test value, 5. 5 plus 3 is positive 8. Um, 5 minus 4 is positive 1. And um, using our argument before over here, if we pick out the test value of 5, we have to go up and for the natural log function. And so then we've got a positive output there too. So three positives there are going to give us positive overall. And we can do our final assessment here for our answer. So we've got positive starting this time not at negative infinity, but at 0. We don't include 0. Uh, 0 to 1 is positive, and then we've got um, 4 to infinity. And then we've got negative in between. 
and so that would be between 1 and 4. Notice none of my test values ever land in these interval or as endpoints of these intervals. Only the places that um, we got for where the function is 0 or undefined, um, those are the only places that land in the endpoints of these intervals ever.